hello. Welcome to the studio, the go-to podcast for creators and entrepreneurs looking to monetize their content and make money online. I'm Abby. I'm Nick, and we are hosts, and we help creators turn their ideas into a reality by sharing industry insights and bringing on special guests who know the best. So today we are going to talk about a new wave of entrepreneurship that is taking over the economy. We're talking about creative entrepreneurship and the creator economy. So here's what's happening. Creators want freedom. They want to work when they want, they want to work where they want, and they want to work on what they want to work on. So they are looking for ways to monetize the things that they love to do, and they're creating content online about it. And guess what? It's working. Like, it's actually working. According to Influencer Marketing Hub's recent report in 2022, 48% of creators already have been able to turn content creation into their full-time job, which is insane. Yeah, absolutely. With the creator economy, we might be asking what exactly that is. It's a creative entrepreneur who is someone who uses their creative or influential knowledge and skills to earn a living. It's more than outside of what we're conditioned to being inside of the box and thinking type of lifestyle, but giving us that freedom to just create any type of lifestyle and put our fingers into any pie that we want and grow some sort of influential time in that space. So what exactly is the creator economy? It's creative entrepreneurs who have built their business online and now are monetizing their knowledge and creative content. And it's taking over the creative content creation industry and it's just key to your success, whether you're working for a company or running your own business. Yeah, so what's actually happening here is people and companies, they're starting to shift. Like people are starting to trust people rather than major corporations and mass media for information and for product recommendations in general. And this is huge. Like, have you guys noticed how companies are starting to look for creators, influencers, bloggers, even online coaches to actually come into their company, provide knowledge and advice and content so that their company can keep relevant. And we're even seeing that companies are asking their employees to make posts, to start tagging the company so that they can start building this online presence that it's undeniable an undeniably important to be built. So now you're also seeing people shifting to shopping small business and they don't want to go with these huge mass production corporations. They want to go with these small business owners and magazines. Even you're looking at the media and what's going out there. And you're realizing that these articles are coming from people with small businesses people's personal stories and all kinds of different media is getting out there now and this is the creator economy at play average people are able to turn their passion and their thoughts and their words into this huge influential thing online and it's completely shifting 21 percent of creators are able to make above 50 thousand dollars of annual income online and if you look at the stats even if it's just a small percentage of people there's 14.92 percent of people making between 1 to 10k a month so imagine how much of a difference that would make in like your life if you saw 1 to 10k being added to your income and that's just like the low end of it it's absolutely crazy yeah it, it really is. Just overall, when you're a creator and you have the positioning as seen as that by the public eye, people are going to be looking to you as an online creator for new purchase recommendations and to shop small business instead of trying to rely on a faceless company that has media and advertisement that try to influence you without that personal touch that you may actually get from a creator or an influencer or somebody that's online pushing that smaller business or newer recommendation because there are new things out there that are giving people a new way to shop and new type of quality within the products that they're buying that people who are in the influencer field or creator field 
are getting that opportunity to even try first. So that opens up new doors for you. That gives you partnerships, that gives you credibility. And uh, that means that these companies are willing to work with creators in a variety of ways, which opens the door for you um, financially and creatively, and just even exponentially in ways for people who want to see the world and may even get paid to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So if you think about that, like now companies are looking to these content creators to help them out. But then also you can make that shift. And if you have something personally that you're passionate about, whether it's blogging, photography, or maybe you're an artist and you create like pottery, for example, and you want to be able to monetize what you're doing, like people are gonna wanna shop from you rather than just going to a regular store. So you're able to, one of the shifts that's happening in the industry is these creators, they're taking their fans online, turning it into a website or an app or a different monetization tool uh, or something that they can just sell so that they're able to profit online. And we've been seeing a lot of that lately too. Yeah, with that, it's giving you the opportunity to just really capitalize with a community and grow that circle, honestly, even if that is a circle of trust of people that are just coming to you to be able to have a new way of, of connecting with just different artists and capitalizing on their artwork. For instance, if somebody who is creating photography or a podcast or just art in general, you know, this allows them to build that community that is trusting them, which can then open up multiple revenue streams, even outside of their art, if they decide to start opening up um, coaching or a, co a course, because that's what we work on. But outside of that, it gives people the opportunity to have a platform that can then give other people an opportunity to springboard off of that and just open up just more opportunities just than yourself because now you have a place for you to speak you have a place for other people to speak you have a place of uh, what was that like a like a marketplace right where you're able to sell your art your creations your streams of revenue are increasing but now you can create a space for other people to capitalize on that as well whether they're doing that for free or now you've created another system and put that in place and just continue building off of the legacy that you've built for yourself off of the creation of, and creative thoughts that you had because it gets exponentially huge when it comes to offering your services or your crafts or your products or whatever it is that you may make and it just gives you more space with the presence of social media and having a personal brand for people to see you and trust you and get to know you and become for, more familiar with what you're offering. And that just gives people a, a greater sense of, of knowing that they can trust what you have because they see you instead of a faceless company. You know, they see, they see a person no matter how big you get, you don't have to necessarily carry on the same thing continuously. We've seen examples of people who have shifted in what they're doing just to continue serving people in different ways because other ways of serving people no longer serve them um, and it just made more sense moving forward in their abilities and their platform so it, it gets exponentially huge and just growing into whatever you want it to be it doesn't have to be one thing forever yeah and you can really see how because of how exponentially things can grow, we want you to know that you don't need to get stuck on trying to figure out exactly what you want to do. Like if you're feeling passionate about something in the moment, act on it, put it out there. And with the community that you already have, I'm sure that you're gonna get some reciprocation, some attention around it. And people are gonna be like, oh, that's interesting that they're trying something. And it doesn't have to be that you need to commit to it 100%. It's just putting yourself out there as a personal brand and showing people, I do have different passions. And if next week you post a different passion that you are working on, like that's your other creative outlet. And that's inspiring to people that you have more than one creative outlet that you wanna act on. And as you grow and as you're putting yourself out there, yes, you can set up systems to be able to monetize that for yourself because 
The first step is getting yourself out there and making sure you're growing a community who looks to you as somebody who's inspirational, somebody who's doing what they want to do, somebody who's passionate about what they want to do. That trust is built and then you move on to monetizing that. And that's how the creator economy works. It's just a bunch of passionate people believing in their craft and turning it into the way that they make money. Like, think about this. Just a decade ago, everyone was being told to choose a realistic job that makes a decent income and then settle down, have your family, and don't worry about it. Like only the famous, the rich, or the lucky, they are the ones who get to live their dreams. But now with the creator economy, you have the freedom to be who you wanna be, to create what you wanna create, and you are absolutely free to pursue whatever passion comes onto your heart because of the increased acceptance and influence that the creator economy has right now. Okay, so let's talk about the different ways to monetize online as a content creator. So this is one that always comes up and we talk about often. It's content curation and brand partnerships. So this is when you as a content creator partner up with a brand and they pay you to create content for them. So this could be in the form of reels, um, post, it could be UGC content, it could be you writing a blog for them. It's just the exchange of content with a brand. And this is how you can start to monetize online as well. If you're an artist and you paint or you have photography or artwork or somewhere in that sort, you can take the time to sell your art online, whatever that may be. There's different varieties of artists out there, obviously, but taking your art and actually putting it out there to be presented to people, whether it's through social media and Instagram or um, different areas of even your own website and just promoting yourself online as an artist, uh, just put your art out there and, and people will take the time to purchase it because people are curious and people collect art. Yeah, absolutely. And you could also put yourself out there as a photographer or a videographer and build a brand off of that and start sharing your past work and looking for new clients online. And that's a different way that you can monetize as a content creator. If you've got a unique service or craft or creation of some sort, uh, creating a brand around that and then focusing on different ways to uh, create variety within that, to monetize that uh, specific niche industry, to create curiosity around something that has a unique value to the market that isn't usually available or seen outside of the, the common, the common um, you know, stores or products or whatever it is that people may be creating to sell off of their platforms. Yeah, and that's actually a good point too, because when you have that unique service or craft, you could actually take that and then that turns into another way that people are monetizing online. And that's through offering online courses or education through um, a subscription service based around that education that you have. So yeah, you can go and build out a course with the knowledge that you have or about the service that you have and teach people exactly what you're doing. If you're finding that people are asking a lot of questions and that's another way that you can monetize online. Through hosting courses, you may find yourself even hosting events that are um, in promotion to your education or your course or whatever it is that you may be offering to the marketplace. These events can be held online, especially now um, with the past few years that we've been through, it's been even easier and more relevant and more of a, a commonality to host an event online. Um, it's more of a modern way of creating um, communities within people is through events online, but there's also the events in person, which also have a unique um, feel. And these are ways to get your, uh, whatever it is that you're offering product or service, artwork, your value out there is through events, is for in-person marketing people to see your face, to see the person who's creating whatever it is that you're creating within your market. And these events online or in-person are, are different ways to diversify your market and, and get introduced to new creators and people you wouldn't normally be introduced to 
if it wasn't for that space anyways. So it comes with more than just being able to grow your community, but also networking as well. Yes. And you could also build on monetizing your community in other ways too. Like for example, you can start paid communities like chat rooms or private groups where people pay a fee monthly or a one-time fee or however you want to approach that and you can have a private space for a select amount of people to have a community where you're networking or maybe you're exchanging services or whatever however you want to position monetizing your community that's definitely an option that we see people doing lately even monetizing facebook groups and you pay to get in so that you have access to these certain people and that's a great way to build your community but then also build a a stronger niche group that you're hanging out with but you're also making money hanging out with them as well so that's a great way to monetize another consideration uh, which we don't have expertise in but have seen success in it is the recent rise in nfts nfts are non-fungible tokens which are through the crypto market and these are ways of taking your physical art um, or even digital art and monetizing it in a whole nother way on the online marketplace Uh, but these are ways to consider your um, artwork at another value that wouldn't normally be accepted in the traditional marketplace because unlike uh, the digital marketplace where you can buy or even physical where you can buy um, remade copies of it there's only either one or a certain number available like it would be with a physical painted art piece or even printed art piece there's either one out of one or one out of how many and so it creates a certain value around it uh, whatever the artist may say it is in the communities that it's involved in Um, but nfts are another way of thinking about restructuring and revamping your artwork or your photography or videos or physical pieces or I mean there's different ways to diversify your income through an NFT just even outside of of artwork. Yeah I like how NFTs really changed the creator market too because it brought this whole new level and like exclusivity to people's content creation and their and their work their art and it brought this legitimacy to it especially with them selling so high. I like how it influenced the market but yeah that's a great way to monetize i like um there's also something that i've been seeing personally especially within the female community is reselling that's a different way that you can monetize and i always see these apps like like to know it and it's like whatever stuff that you're wearing you can have a link affiliate link and you're paid to promote the stuff that you're already wearing and you can resell clothes that you have or have an affiliate link and people are buying what you're wearing and if you have a community that likes your fashion like that's a great way to monetize without even having to do anything or create your own product it's you putting your fashion out there and leaving your links and you're getting paid so that's a great way that people are making money online too another way is podcasting like what we're doing right now Uh, this is one of many ways that we utilize our platform but for most people who get into podcasting it has to be a main focus of the one thing that you do as of the amount of energy and time of effort it takes to go into having a very uh, successful podcast and if you're doing something already and stepping into podcasting you can have a strong podcast monetizing your current um courses or artwork or uh, communities or or even nfts or even the clothing that you're reselling you can talk about fashion you you, it, it has to be in line if it's going to be in addition with something that you're already doing so that you're known for it Uh, But podcasting is a great way to either monetize it individually or use podcasting as a way to co-collaborate or use your own platform to promote your services, your art, your products, whatever it may be on your own platform and then even gain skills to, like I mentioned, co-collaborate, either bring people on or go on other um, podcasters' platforms and continue to push what you have through the 
through the platforms that you've created for yourself. Yeah, I like podcasting. It's really great. And I know that people do make a lot of money doing it. It's just honing in and focusing on monetizing that say, that platform. And it's the same thing with like YouTube. YouTube, you see a lot of YouTubers are making a lot of money and it's because they focused in on making those videos. They focused in on being a YouTuber and or even a live stream like Twitch, same thing. You're growing that community by putting out your content, your videos that people are latching onto. They like seeing it so they continue to watch your videos over and over and that's how you grow your community on there. But then once you hit a certain level on these platforms, the platform itself will pay you, like YouTube will pay you once you get to a certain level of views and a certain level of subscribers. So then you can have ads on your platform and you're able to monetize those videos that you were just making for fun. Same thing with Twitch. I know you can get up to the point where they're, you're getting paid for your live streams and patrons and, and all that stuff. All those platforms where you're just putting your videos and you out there, you can monetize that in the end by just working on growing your community and focusing yourself around that. Yeah. Um, Patrons is actually a really good way to create a subscription based platform for your audience. And you can set them up on monthly subscriptions, or you can even give people the option to just give you the amount of money they feel that whatever you're offering is worth to them. Um, so that everybody has a level of entry to having access to you while you're still able to monetize what you're um, offering. The idea of creating music for some people um, is actually a pretty uh, big dream for a lot of people, uh, in my opinion. And then actually going out and doing it could, could, could be a way of monetizing something that you have a passion for that you would continue going towards, even if you're not great at it now. But just stepping into the music field, you could, I mean, ultimately what you're passionate about is what you're going to keep striving for because if you're not passionate about it, no sane person is going to keep going towards what is giving them some sort of suffering, right? And you can find that through music, but also find a great wide of availability through monetizing your art through music and not even being represented through a label or a management group and being an independent artist and just getting widely known through your music, which could also increase these other levels of areas that we talked about, um, whether that's through podcasting or YouTube, live streaming, you know, NFTs, um, just whatever it is that you're offering. It just gives people more availability to reach out to you and uh, get to know you. And it, it can be something that you that you might be focusing on right now or just something that you want to do later on in the future. But, you know, whatever you do, whatever it may be, it's you can have everything, you know, monetized at some point and you don't need to include another organization or platform that's going to take money away from your profits off of the time and effort that you put in getting unpaid for so long that you did. Yes, yes. And that's what the creator economy is so amazing for is that you're able to do that now and that it's so common. And I just want to throw in like one more last one. I know there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can continue to create. And I know you guys are probably having some ideas of your own. Blogging is a great way too. blogs. You wouldn't even think it, but they grow to such a huge audience that you're able to put ads on there or you're able to monetize through affiliate links or whatever. But blogs make a lot of money too. So if you're a writer, put yourself out there, put your blogs out there um, and then grow it into when you officially make a book or something and write and put your art, your writing out there, that is also content creation and art. So yeah, there's so many ways that you can get started in the creator economy. This is just a few, but let's get into how to get started. So we have a four step process when it comes to building your online presence, growing your audience, getting out there and then being officially known 
and gaining the exposures that you need to be able to monetize online. So we always start with defining your brand and establishing what it's going to be. So when you're thinking about defining your brand, just think about you, what you love, your passion, your humor, your art. Think about being your authentic self. Like even if you are passionate and activism, like whatever it is, share your authentic self and your authentic um, thoughts with your audience. Your passion about whatever you're passionate about is your brand. And the more that you share what you're working on, what you're thinking, that's gonna be what grows your audience. And that's the second thing. Yeah, so we look to help anybody who has uh, defined their brand, you know, help them understand the point in growing their audience. Now that you've established a brand and you've created um, some sort of recognition for yourself, it's important to now put yourself in an audience and, and, and build your community. But while you're building your community, also test what you've created in different ways so that you know what's working and what's not working. And so what your community and your audience wants to see is ultimately going to what guides you through your creative process when maybe you're feeling uninspired or uncreative because this will give you the opportunity to know what your community wants to see you do because most people see our, uh, what is it, our, our um, like they recognize how our abilities are before we're able to really recognize them. And through growing a fresh personal brand or, or a bit of brand in general, your community is gonna tell you what they want to see. Um, something that's important to consider as well is now that you're niching down you're starting, you're going to start building a community of, of new friends or um, new uh, levels of influence that are going to influence your artwork or uh, your services or your brand based off of what they're doing because that's what's working for them. And you start to see a pattern and a dialogue between this industry. And so it's important to start networking with people that have the similar lifestyle, that have the similar outcome, that have the similar support system that they have through their community it's important to start networking with them and starting to get to know their thinking their mindset what they're doing what's working because your community can tell you a lot but the people that are doing it and that are having results from it can tell you what's working and so you're going to want to keep continuing to network with them build your community but you also have to remember while you're building your community you're networking you're also um creating a centrifugal energy towards uh, reciprocation of a support towards those people's art, towards your community. If people are showing you their art and they're showing you their services, recognize that they're showing that to you because they find that, you know, not necessarily that it would be important to you, but maybe you inspired them to go towards that and they want to share with you. And so even if you take the time to look at it or just recognize that it's, that's awesome, that's amazing, you know, even on your own level too, and what you're creating for your network, support other people's creation as well and the people that you're gleaming from and learning from because while you support that you're going to create a, a stronger trust with them you're going to build rapport with them and they're all going to want to support you and it's going to be one healthy circle one healthy balance one healthy ecosystem within your audience because it's not just outward it's inward and outward yes absolutely so you're starting with getting super defined then you're growing your audience. You're starting to network with other creators. And the next step that you wanna take moving forward from that is start to gain recognition in your industry. And that's gonna be through actually going with these creators that you networked with now and starting to collaborate with them. So collaborate with them, host a webinar together, do an art piece together, make a song together, whatever it is that's gonna help you borrow each other's audience and you can cross promote. And that's what's gonna start making sure that not only is your numbers and audience raising because more people are seeing you, but you're starting to be recognized in the industry because you're working with these other creators. The other creators are seeing that Oh, you partnered up with somebody that I know. That's awesome. Like I should know you too. And that's how you're going to start gaining this recognition as an influence in your industry. And people are going to start picking up on that. And you can also, not only with collaborations, you can start going to network locally. So people around you in your area start to know you. So you're walking around, you're seeing people 
and they know what you do. They know about your social media. They know about what you're promoting and you're getting this close knit community that you've always wanted and people know who you are. And you can also join these groups online. You could do it locally. You can do it by reaching out to brands and asking them to partner up and cross promote. You can do it by working with other creators. Like there's all these different ways that you could start to gain recognition and it's all through these collaborations and reaching out to people to work together yep through reaching out and creating those collaborations with uh, the community that you had networked with previously is really going to make an impact when your whole ability to just deliver overall in general and get better and, and just be the next version of yourself and it's it's important to while you're growing on yourself and networking that you continue to keep the mindset of now that you've developed your brand your audience your recognition everything that's going into that you know it's it's time to start getting paid for the work that you've done it's time to start getting you know known that you're somebody that not only can create but can also uh, host a professional business and uh, create an entire structure for yourself that allows you to live off of it and grow it exponentially now. And so this means that you have the fear, obviously, of success possibly like some people struggle with, but you do it anyways and you close your first sale and realize that wasn't too bad. You close sales, move forward, make some money. You start building a professional case study portfolio for yourself that allows other people that want to work with you in the future to see that this person has a arm at where they've landed their plane and they've been able to show that they can take flight and, and land and they can do it again and move forward. And so if you're somebody that has already done this stuff and you don't have a case study yet, it's time to put your case studies together and grow your portfolio and make sure that your effort is seen professionally in a light where people are like, oh, I should work with this person. It's a no brainer. You know, this person has already, like, I want someone to create a case study for me, how they created a case study for somebody else, because that's incredible how they showcase their work or their business or how they really put that in the spotlight of their work. And, um, you know, clients, they want, they want, what that means for your clients as well as they can use it as promotional material do and and that promotes you that promotes them and it goes back to that whole healthy ecosystem that i had spoken about earlier um but while you're doing all this it's important to remember uh there are still laws there are uh, regulations and it's important to legitimize your business uh follow your uh tax laws and make sure all of that stuff is uh, legitimized with your business having whether it needs proper insurance or it needs um, licenses, whatever that might be, uh, make sure that you're legitimizing your business and getting it uh, registered with your state and obtaining those licenses and anything else, uh, including insurance that may be needed to run your business professionally and properly um, so that you can continue to keep building your brand and your business because it'll definitely be uh, from the beginning, learning curves if you haven't already been there um, learning curves to still come along the way because honestly if it wasn't so tough and anybody could gain it then if you could get it today you wouldn't appreciate it like you would get it tomorrow or however long it takes yes absolutely so all in all we just want you guys to know the creator economy is here it's been here and it's only gonna get bigger it is never too late to start working on your ideas to start growing your community, to start putting yourself out there. Actually, and in fact, there is no better time. There's no more doubt in the legitimacy of being a creator and you can use that to your advantage. So that is all for this session at the studio. If you wanna learn more about how to get started building your brand online, we actually do have a free training at dare.imempath.com slash launch. And we'll go more in depth about how exactly to get started on creating your personal brand online so that you can start making money as a creator. So that's all for this session at the studio. We'll see you soon.